This week in comic books, DC wants to play with time travel and make it as about as uninteresting as possible. In the land of Marvel, we get a tie-in that's not really a, a tie-in. I'm not sure why it's even like one reference doesn't make it. Anyway, and in the land of independence, we read Monkey Meat. We're still waiting to find out what if it's actual monkey meat, actually. Oh, it would be horrible. Poor chimpanzees. All that and very few other comic books, because... Low, low this week. I think it was that happened across the board right after the intro. Hey, what's going on, you wonderful weirdos? I'm Pokan Joe, and as always, I'm super excited that you're here today after New Comic Book Day. What did we pick up? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get much. I literally only have six comic books, and apparently, this is becoming a problem across the board. Is it the shipping? Is it the different dates? I don't know. What are you experiencing where you're at? I'm really kind of curious. I kind of want to, I don't want to figure it out. I just want to know what's going on. I think that's fair. I don't know. So let me know what, if you're watching this. Let me know if, if you're having problems getting comic books right now. Because it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. But without further ado, let's jump into this week's haul. We're going to start with DC. I picked up uh, Detective Comics number 1052. So they did something weird here. So if you don't know, we have the the Arkham Towers, right? That, that's our new Arkham Asylum. And for some reason, they're able to really keep control of everybody. We kind of knew, like, there were some drugs in it because the party crashers are there, right? That's their thing. And then, uh, for some reason, out of nowhere, we also find out Psycho Pirate is uh, mentally controlling everybody. Psycho Pirate. I... I don't personally find Psycho Pirate a particularly interesting character, uh, especially over the last few years. It's more like Psycho Goth, right? Because he's like this really emotional, weird cat. This is beginning stuff is that we can't even count that anymore, and it's long past some people's birth. But where we're at now with him is just like, oh, this is kind of really a sad guy going through some mental stuff, right? In a mental institution where you can't get help. That's weird. The backstory of this is basically a Robin story. And I think we're kind of starting to lean into this whole Robin army thing. Because they they showcased it in uh, Batman and Brigby, right? That's definitely a Robin army. But they kind of do it in here, too, where we talk about these two kids that are working for the Penguin. And Batman doesn't want the kid to go because he made, he, the kids may recognize him because he kind of knows them. Sure enough, you know, being a kid, Robin doesn't listen, shows up, but then why the kids are being arrested, it's like, no, that was a different Robin. There's a whole bunch of them. My prediction, if you will, is I think in the future we're going to get a Robin Army comic book. Like, that's going to be the focus. This is going to be various Robins, and they're all going to be super special and super weird. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I care enough about a, a sidekick. I know that's a horrible thing to say, right? But consider it cannon fodder i mean really yeah. so i don't know we'll see where that gets takes us in the future uh next justice league so this is was an okay book i just i really wish the premise of the story would have changed a little bit in this I, i'm i'm not particularly interested in time travel stories when you know it's going to be a time travel story and you realize that you read the major plot point right there at the beginning I find this, I, I think we've seen this trope enough in movies, we've seen it in television shows, we've seen it in various other forms of comic book novels, like we're kind of used to it, you can almost smell it when it's happening, and right in the beginning there, we got Omek, Omek's cool character, love me some Omek, and he's like looking at Hulk Woman in a glass tube, and I was like, this is weird. And then, like, all of a sudden it jumps and there's Hulk women. I'm like, oh, it's a time-traveling story. And sure enough, it was. The only interesting part in this I found interesting was this whole, the Time Lord has been fractured, if you will, into, like, four other different Time Lords. And they're all looking for the same thing. What is it that they're looking for? The Gold Lantern Ring. That's interesting to me. But the whole, you know, Hulk woman traveling to the future, fighting with Omek, and then, boom, coming back. That just means we're going to get a bunch of random flashbacks in a few episodes as we chase down this Golden Lantern story. And I don't know if I care about that. I think I just want the Golden Lantern story. I hope. And please don't do the trope where you're gonna play off of like PTSD or something like that. I'll be honest with you, my heart goes out to people that actually do suffer from it. Alright, let me say that and be very clear on it. 
I don't like seeing it in, 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 in a generic format. Or is that bad? Am I a bad person for that? I think I am. I might be. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, yeah. Suicide Squad Place. All right. So as weird as this is, I liked it. Like, this is out there. This kind of plays off of the, the regular guy, the everyday guy. You know, petty criminal, yada, yada, yada. Suicide Squad fashion. Gets picked for a team. They're going to enhance him with some superpowers. And, of course, our most average guy gets the most lamest powers. He gets invisible arms. Like, I'm not even sure what it's even a superpower. But Amanda Waller's like... Screw it. You're on the team with the other super-powered people. And, oh, by the way, Suicide Squad's are your boss. And you get Miss Crazy herself, Harley Quinn, as your teammate. Not at first, but they ended up getting switched. We've already dropped our one body. We've got the suicidal girl in here. It just wants to die. Apparently there's a big secret behind her. Our everyday guy, Joe, he apparently has a relationship with uh, this other female. He's just... I don't know why anybody listens to her, but they do. Apparently, she might have something else going on there. We, we had we had an old guy that could like see into the future or see different connections or something. They didn't really explain the power very well, but it was interesting because he could like see everything. I don't know what that means, but it's still interesting. And as weird as that review just was, I'm still like, I want to read some more of this because it's just so. It's so ridiculous, but it deals with the mundane and the ordinary at the same time. It's like the perfect clash of the two things, I think is a good way to describe it. And I think that's why I enjoy it so much. It's this ridiculousness and then everyday life, and it's like, congratulations, you're working together. <laughs> All right, next, uh, Devil's Reign. Devil's Reign has been interesting to me. I really like this. This particular issue brought up some interesting points about uh, Wilson Fizz's relationship with his wife and like you wish you had a relationship that was that strong like I'm just saying that is you, you want to talk about matching crazies there right that beautiful even for villains it's a beautiful relationship um, we also find out that uh, Wilson Fizz's most iconic MacGuffin if you will his cane with the diamond on it apparently there's something with that we also find out that the Avengers know about the kids now, uh, the Purple Man's kids, and they're like, we got to go get them. They're going to grab the champions. Champions are going to help out and, you know, go get these kids. Rhino kind of does a good guy thing by telling the champions how to avoid the drones that are flying around town, trying to capture superheroes and eliminating crime. And we get better understanding of Doc Ock's relationship to Wilson Fisk in this to kind of smooth that out to make sense. So this is a, it's an informational dump, really. They're just dumping a bunch of information on you, a bunch of stuff that's going to be relevant here really soon, but you, know, you kind of just need that issue to kind of say, hey, this is what we're operating in now, and these are where the stories are going to be heading. Consider this the hub as we branch forward, which uh, needs to happen pretty quick on an issue four. Right? It gives us two more issues. Okay. Next. Uh, the book that's a lie this week. So midnight <laughs> with numbers is number eight. It says tie in. Okay. There's like a panel in here. We got Moon Hunter or Hunter's Moon. Uh, he's taking over for Moon Hunter. This is too much. Hunter's Moon is taking over for Moon Knight's uh, position for a while because Moon Knight is off over at Devil's Reign. He's been arrested and incarcerated there. That's the whole tie-in. The rest of the story is completely unique and original to to him. So I'm not really sure why it's considered a tie-in. It's like a mention. I, I don't know. Every time a comic book mentions something in another comic book, does that make it a tie-in now? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not getting hung up on it, though. We're moving forward with this. In this one, we fight a villain uh, who's shown up in comic books before, and um, it's the uh, Stained Glass Scarlet. All right, and... They kind of gave the backstory over here. Basic tragedy, right? Wife, husband's a douchebag, son turns into a douchebag, mobster type bang, gangbangers, right? Not gangbangers, but mobsters, but bad villains, bad people. There you go. 
So it kind of goes through, and what she is now, what she is now, she's the living embodiment of her own legend, if you will, right? So, Hunter Moon, or Moon Hunter, is, uh, I forget which way it goes, I want to say Moon Hunter, I keep, I know I keep saying it wrong, and I do not have time for editing, so I apologize as I take a quick glance. Uh, so yeah, anyway, you know what I'm talking about, the other Moon Knight guy. He calls Khonshu to come, right? Khonshu is God. And they kind of fight it out. And Khonshu kind of explains something to us that I don't... I think it was very easy to look over, but I found it very interesting, you know, that the that, uh, story, it being a God now, lowercase g, and Khonshu being a God, capital G, right? They can fight each other all day long. They can inflict harm on each other. They can you know, banish each other for a short period of time. Like, it lists all these things, but the one thing they can't do is destroy each other. Why? Underlined? Well, faith prevents that, right? The whole reason why this particular character is even alive is because the belief of her. So as long as there's a belief of something, it never truly goes away. Like, we get forgotten for a short period of time. You can even punish it, crucify it, whatever you got to do. But at the end of the day, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so, yeah, I, th I thought that was really smart. I really wish they kind of honed in on that a little bit more. Like, that's an interesting concept. And you can really play with a lot of things with it. Um, or you can just let your imagination go wild with it like mine did. I was like, oh, I'm going to have fun with this. So, yeah, this is an interesting story. It's still kicking on all cylinders it's like i have not picked up an issue of moon knight and just hated it yeah, for honestly it's it's been good except for the fact that it lied to me a little bit all right last but not least i picked up monkey meat this week again there's just really nothing else and i pretty much already blasted this book but i am happy i picked this one up uh this one kind of dealt with real life a little bit right we get a, a kid who has no purpose you know, direction, but then doesn't can't figure out why he never gets a chance. So he gets uh, tempted, right, by a can of soda that had a god in it. Gives him superpowers. Uh, he got beat up earlier, so now he's going to go seek revenge, which automatically he's thinking he's a good guy, but good guys don't seek revenge, right? Right? Or do they? Regardless... He meets up with the groundskeeper guy that got all buffed up in the last one. They battle it out. He tries to make these moral messages to the kid. Kid kind of starts hearing it. Our monkey lawyer comes in and is like, oh, sorry for the inconvenience, blah, 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 blah. We overlooked your application when you applied for a job. How about being head of security? No lesson learned. Life took over. <laughs> I, I liked that. I thought that was funny. Uh, a little bit of a satirical look, maybe. Right? I know we want to beat up corporations, but I don't think this is actually directed towards uh, a corporation. I think this is directed to the people that make choices to be in corporations. Why people hate corporations, which I don't understand that whole concept as a whole. But it is what it is. All right, guys. That's my haul this week. Super short. Keep your eyes out for the Evil Lair promo. We're going to be making something there. Something super cool for two people. We're working on two people on the short month because I'm a sucker. So we're going to do that. And also, thank you all. If you uh, if you uh, stopped by the auction house that I held on Wednesday night um, with the links and everything, if you swung in there, if you bought something, even if you just swung in just to see what was there, I, I just want to give you a heartfelt thank you very much for stopping in there and helping me kind of decrease that stuff. I hope you got uh, what you wanted at the price that you want. And you get it shipped the way that you want as well. Um, definitely. And of course, if you have any concerns, questions, problems, just hit DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to help you out. All right, guys. I got nothing else. I got to head out of here. This is a short one. Bye.